What a great week three for the Pittsburgh Steelers, particularly as it pertains to the AFC North and the division. Let's just look at these standings, man. Ravens, unfortunately, defeated the Cowboys to get to one and two. Browns are the Browns, though. They end up losing to the Giants and Danny Dimes. And the Bengals at 0-3. And, and what's crazy about those bottom three teams there, Ravens, Browns, and Bengals, I actually weirdly think the Bengals are still the better of those three. They hung in there with the Chiefs. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. And then Commanders, ah, you know what? No, never mind. Bengals defense is probably the worst of the three. But they have Joe Burrow. Like I think he's the X factor in the equation. With Joe Burrow looking like the Joe Burrow of old, I think he's the best quarterback out of the Ravens, Browns, and Bengals. And I guess you could say historically, you know, he's the best quarterback in the division. I'm liking what I'm seeing from Justin Fields, though. If he can keep it up, I think he'll have a say in who the best quarterback in the division is when it's all said and done. But, man, I don't think you can ask for a better start to this season. It was a good week three for us. You had the Browns and Bengals lose. Unfortunately, the Ravens win. But look at the start to this season, man. 3-0, and and the rest of the division is reeling right now. 1-2 and two Ravens, Browns 1-2, and two, and Bengals 0-3. and three. I don't think you could ask for a better start. It's just funny that all the experts, the national media, was writing off the Steelers saying that we were going to finish under 500. We were going to be the worst team in the division. I think our odds were most likely to finish last in the division from all the sports books and everything. But here we are. We're almost a quarter of the way through, and we're definitely going to be favored. We are favored in this game against the Colts, so we have a really good chance at sitting at 4-0. and Can't beat it, man. Can't beat it. I tried telling them. I know a lot of you guys tried telling the haters and the doubters that this Steelers defense should be elite. On paper, we have all the talent. It should be a lot better than what it was last year. We just got to stay healthy. We have all these really nice acquisitions. Patrick Queen, the defensive line's got young pieces with the Keanu Benton, Cam Hayward. Hopefully, he's healthy. TJ Watson is prime. Highsmith, Herbig, he's developing. Watch out for him. He's going to be a sleeper on this, uh, this Steelers defense. And we might get to see him really explode on the scene these next couple of weeks with Highsmith being out. JPJ going into year two. We added Deshaun Elliott. Like, there was all these reasons we were trying to tell the doubters and the haters that the defense is for real. But you add to the fact that we should have an improved offense on top of it with Arthur Smith being here, better quarterback situation, improved offensive line. We went 10 and seven and made the playoffs last year with a broken down defense and an inept offense for most of the season. What do you think we're going to do this year where everything's going to be improved across the board? We still have Mike Tomlin, so you know we're not going to finish under 500 with him. It's impossible, especially with these 17-game uh, seasons. We're at least going to go 9-8, and eight, no matter what. That's the absolute floor with Mike Tomlin as your coach. But with everything getting improved across the board, you could even throw special teams in the mix with us signing Cordero Patterson, and obviously we got bossed. Try to tell them, like, Steelers are going to be good. Steelers are going to be good. And you look at the... First three games of this season, the Steelers are absolutely showcasing that and living up to their potential and doing exactly what I, I thought they could do. If you just played Steeler ball, really, you, you just didn't hurt yourself and you stayed healthy. And we, we are staying healthy for the most part, but I think there also is something to this team and the depth players that we have where we could plug and play and get out of stadiums with some of the backups, if need be. But let's talk about... I got a few topics here to rattle off, or just a few uh, things that have popped up recently in the Steelers world. We'll talk about these three things, and then we'll get into the Steelers-Colts preview. How about that? So Steelers made a couple pickups over the last couple of days. And we did, I, I know we had C.J. Henderson in for a workout last week, but we did actually sign him today to the practice squad. But I'll talk about him second between these two players because the first guy that was signed was Calvin Anderson. He is deserving of the Snoop meme, who I was just about to say it right there. Like, yeah, I bet you you guys don't even know who he is at all. But that's why I did some research. 
for us uh, to get us familiar with who Calvin Anderson is. So he's an offensive tackle. And just right there, him playing that position makes sense as to why we signed him with Troy Fowtano getting injured and being out for the season. And we also have Dylan Cook, who's supposed to be our fourth offensive tackle after the big three. He's still on IR. So we're struggling for depth at the tackle position. So it, may, it makes sense we're picking up a Calvin Henderson. He's got experience in the league, 14 starts in his career over four seasons, spent three seasons in Denver, and then most recently one in New England. Crazy fact about him is he actually almost died twice, and this is in a short span of time, over the last like year or so. He was doing some charity work over in Africa and contracted malaria. He was down bad from that, but obviously recovered. He's still with us right now, but that was the first thing. And then the second thing was an almost Damar Hamlin situation during the season where he had like a chest contusion, and uh, yeah, made it through with that but he had to go to the hospital and everything so god bless him man thank god that he is still with us but yeah over the span of the last year or so almost died twice from just crazy circumstances uh but he's here now he's with the steelers and last year obviously with those two scenarios happening he was kind of limited didn't uh fully participate with new england was only appeared in five games uh and yeah he's just really um a veteran type of guy veteran presence a depth guy that you're bringing in if we have to start him i don't think you're feeling great about it but given our current circumstance with the tackle position nothing wrong with picking up a veteran offensive lineman a, a veteran offensive lineman that particularly plays offensive tackle so nothing wrong with the pickup just wanted to get you guys familiar with who he is but he's just he's more of a journeyman guy I, like he's not here to take anyone's spot or really challenge anyone like that i think we just need him in case broderick goes down or dan moore goes down at this point and i i think you know within a week or two we'll be relying on dylan cook to be the main backup between him and calvin anderson uh, because I think we really like Dylan Cook. Over these last couple of years, there's been a lot of buzz around him potentially being a piece for us long term. Next signing though, CJ Henderson. Big name. We picked him up, put him on the practice squad, so we're not going to see him this week. Ninth overall pick in the 2020 draft. He's a cornerback, plays a cornerback position. He was traded from the Jaguars. That's the team that picked him in the draft back in 2020. Traded from Jaguars to Carolina in his second season. So spent like the last two and a half years in Carolina. Started in 32 of the 49 games that he's appeared in. Three picks, 16 pass deflections, 172 tackles. So not the greatest of production for four seasons of being in the league already. And being the ninth overall pick, you're definitely expecting more. In fact, I think it's fair to say C.J. Henderson's career thus far has been a disappointment. So he was a free agent this offseason, and he signed with the Houston Texans, but didn't even make it through the offseason because he gets released by the Texans before the 2024 season starts. And, yeah, he was just sitting out there in free agency. We had a workout with him. Last week, I thought it was interesting. Ultimately, we didn't pick him up. We picked another cornerback over him, which was just like, in my opinion, a little head scratching of just like, man, why can't this dude at least make our practice squad compared to guys that I haven't even heard of? But gets the opportunity this week, presumably because Corey Trice, he's put on IR, so we could use the extra cornerback depth. But Right now, he's not going to be on the active 53 because we still got JPJ, Dante Jackson, Beanie Bishop, Darius Rush is still there, and I am missing one more name, James Pierre. We just called him up. James Pierre, mainly for the special teams work, but we know he could be CB4, CB5 for you on a game day. Get a few snaps out there, and he's not going to kill you. He's not going to put you in a terrible spot. So... For C.J. Henderson, I don't really see a path for him to make this 53 unless 
another guy goes down here soon, but I, I think he's going to really have to impress uh, in practice squad to make it up uh, even over some of the guys that we got right now because some of the guys that are on practice squad at, at the cornerback spot, they've been with us throughout the offseason. I think they're a lot more familiar with the system and everything. But think, Corey Trice, he should be back after four weeks. We're going to get Cam Sutton back midway through the season. So like, I, I don't know what room there is going to be for a CJ Henderson on this team this year. But for him, you just got to think of this as an opportunity because you've been with two subpar organizations to start off your career. You catch on with the Steelers, you get in the system, you learn some things throughout this season on the practice squad. And then who knows, maybe you have a chance next off season to make the squad. I think that's CJ Henderson's path. Almost like, when we had Denzel Mims chilling on practice squad last year, some of those other like high end or like high upside receivers, ultimately none of them made the team, but you saw that we gave him a chance. You saw that we had him there for training camp. We had him there for preseason. So I'm thinking that's going to be CJ Henderson's path here. Hopefully it can work out, man, because it's not too often you could get like a ninth overall pick, uh, a highly talented guy so easily but th there's a reason for that is because he's disappointed thus far it's almost like us picking up justin gilbert back in like when was that that was during the killer b era i don't remember the exact year but justin gilbert was the number four overall pick cornerback for the cleveland browns out of oklahoma state and they trade him to us for like a six round pick so it's a low risk high reward move i just wouldn't get our hopes up or expectations up nothing wrong with the pickup though Big name. It's going to, I guess, get some eyes on this move. It's, it's going to drum up some intrigue just because of who he is and where he was drafted and everything. But I'm not, I'm not thinking he's going to be doing anything this season. CJ Henderson, maybe watch out for him in 2025, but nothing in 2024 is my guess. How about this one, though, from Bill Belichick? He's talking Steeler quarterbacks on Pat McAfee and had this quote. This one's been making the rounds a little bit. He said, Pittsburgh might have the best quarterback situation in the league. Goes on and says, you have an experienced guy behind Justin Fields if you need him. And then, yeah, I mean, I, I guess basically that's it right there. You have Justin Fields. He's insinuating Fields is like the highly talented. He's the upside guy. And then you also have a Russell Wilson behind him a, a nine-time pro bowl or super bowl champion i get where he's coming from here uh maybe he just got caught up in the heat of the moment but it, i can't say that we have the best quarterback situation in the league if you want to include contracts i think we are in the upper tier of quarterback situations no doubt about it because we're only paying justin fields whatever's left on his rookie deal and then Russell Wilson is on the vet minimum. Denver's paying him all that money. We don't got to worry about that at all. So for a combined probably four or five million dollars and us having Justin Fields and Russell Wilson, that's a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good value, especially with how Justin Fields has been playing. But if you want to look at the best quarterback situations, it, it's got to be Patrick Mahomes. Like I would take Patrick Mahomes and paying him, what is it, $45 million per year? over having Fields and Russell Wilson for the, you know, five or six million, whatever whatever their two contracts combined to be. I'd take Mahomes. I'd say the same thing about Josh Allen. Like, no matter what their contracts are, I would take those two over Fields and Wilson. I think you got to throw Purdy in the mix, being on the rookie deal. And then I, I'm also thinking like a Matt Stafford or an Aaron Rodgers. They're not making or th their contracts aren't, extravagant they're up there i think stafford's in the 40 or 45 million dollar range aaron Rodgers, i think he took a pay cut he was initially at around 50 million when he took that extended deal with the packers but i think he dropped it i think he took some type of pay cut i think those are the only guys though those are the only about five names that i wouldn't worry about the contract as much with them i would just take them over whatever we got going here in pittsburgh even though Fields and Russ are, in an, are at an extreme value. I think you could make an argument for Fields and Russ over about anyone else, though. 
So, I, yeah, I think we got like a top five or six quarterback situation in the league right now. I just thought it was something interesting to think about because you hear the statement, best quarterback situation in the league. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's let's think about this a little bit more. There's still a Patrick Mahomes. There's still a Josh Allen. But, it, yeah, if you look at all the quarterbacks in the league, what they're getting paid, we're up there. We're up there in, in terms of favorable quarterback situations. No doubt about it. Because, like, Jared Goff, he's getting paid $55 million. Like, that's – come on, man. The way Fields is playing versus, like, a Lamar Jackson getting paid 50 plus. Maybe I'd throw Burrow in the mix of you'd take him no matter what the contract is. But I don't know. Him and that Bengals team ain't looking good. I think that's more on the Bengals defense because Joe Burrow does look back going to what I said in the intro. A lot of these other dudes, man. Dak Prescott getting 60 million. Uh, who else? Jordan Love getting whatever he's getting, 50 some. Jalen Hurts getting 50 some. You know what? Yeah, maybe I like the Steelers situation better than those guys. Maybe I do. Now, it, it still takes Justin Fields playing good and keeping up his production and everything he's been doing, for sure, for sure. Maybe this is a, a different conversation before the season started. I get it. But, hey, Steelers are playing good, man. So we're in the news. People are talking about us. And you have statements like this from Bill Belichick. Last thing. We got from Dan Graziano. Wrote a little article revolving around trade buzz, rumors around the league. that just dropped for week four. And so the Steelers were active on the wide receiver market in the offseason. Remember, they had a real chance to land Brandon Ayuk. Had the 49ers had not been able to extend him. I expect them to continue to monitor the tr receiver trade market as the deadline approaches. Tennessee's DeAndre Hopkins and Jacksonville's Christian Kirk are two veterans who could conceivably become available and might be appealing to the Steelers if their teams continue to lose and fall out of the playoff race. So I mentioned DeAndre Hopkins before, and it makes a ton of sense because. He's on the Titans, and the Titans are terrible. Will Levis is not good. And it looks like DeAndre Hopkins still got it, even though he's dealing with that MCL. Had a pretty good week last week. Uh, who did the Titans even play? I don't remember who they played, but he had a good week. He's actually doing some stuff. Because a lot of you guys, whenever I mentioned Hopkins, got me off the Hopkins idea because you brought up the injury, and I forgot about that. And I was like, ah, maybe, yeah, maybe Hopkins isn't the best idea. But I, it looks like he's back to some form of DeAndre Hopkins. But he's only got this year left with the Titans. He'll be a free agent. And to Graziano's point, if the Titans keep losing, there's no reason in keeping Hopkins around. I'm sure Hopkins is going to want out. He's going to be frustrated. He's going to want to get traded to a contender. So why not move him and get some type of future asset? Because if you're the Titans, you need to be in rebuild mode. And Hopkins, he'd be, I think he'd be a really good outside compliment to George Pickens here. Now, with Christian Kirk, this is the first time I'm hearing his name. And that can make sense. I don't think anyone expected Jacksonville to be this bad, but they're sitting at 0-3. Doug Peterson isn't committing to a quarterback for week four between Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones. So it could start getting bad there. And Christian Kirk. He doesn't have a favorable contract remaining, so I could see them wanting to move off of that. It has a $27 million cap hit next year. It's $13 million in dead cap. So if you're a team trading for him, you could rework the deal. You could move on from him as a cap casualty, but then you're taking on $13 million in dead cap, which would kind of be tough. It makes you think you wouldn't be giving up anything of significance to get a Christian Kirk. It would probably just be a late-round draft pick. Probably something like the Browns gave up to get Jerry Judy. I'm thinking like a fifth or a sixth. But I like, I mean, to be a, a compliment to Pickens, to be that number two, I wouldn't be opposed to Christian Kirk. I think that's something to monitor. Yeah. And then, along with a bunch of the other names that I've mentioned in the past. But right now, I don't think we got to be in a rush. I don't think we have to do anything because the winning can keep us patient. And if you have 
Calvin Austin doing what he did last week, Scotty Miller doing what he did, Pat Frymuth catching some passes. When you got guys actually stepping up outside of George Pickens, yeah, you can afford to wait another week to see if they could do it again because you're sitting at 3-0 and and you keep winning games. I think it's a different story if we're sitting at 1-2 and two and the receivers have done what they've done up to this point. But at 3-0 and and the offense looking good, Fields looking comfortable back there. It, it doesn't really feel like we're missing out on anything. Even though I did just say that after week two against the Broncos game, this week was a little bit different. I think this week was a little bit different for everyone on the offense. It, it felt like we took another step up and hit another level for Justin Fields, the receivers, uh, for even the running game. That, yeah, I know it was a tough sledding game for Najee Harris, but that second half, the floodgates opened up against a good Chargers defense we stuck with the run and then we really got after it in the third and the fourth quarter and imposed our will on the Chargers defense I don't think we got to be in a rush to make a receiver move but I don't think Graziano's off in terms of us still monitoring the market and seeing what's available the closer we get to the trade deadline I don't think there's anything wrong with that so let me check in who's with who's tuning in. Then we'll get into this Steelers Colts preview. I'm liking this matchup a lot for the Steelers, a lot. Um, Tommy Vincent said, "What was the official injury for Trice? I think it was a hamstring. IR. He'll be out for four weeks. Yeah, Steelers fan five three two confirms hamstring for Trice." Tommy Vincent says, "Roman Wilson needs to hop on the moving train before it passes him up." Didn't we say the same thing about Calvin Austin in Calvin Austin's rookie year? And then we didn't even see Calvin Austin for that season. So that might concern me a little bit. Because I want to see Roman Wilson out there. I think it'd be a really good piece of this offense. Last week, he was technically a healthy scratch, right? That's not good. Definitely not good. Brandon P says, okay, he's just seconds what some of you guys are saying about Corey Trice. He says he could be so good, but just can't stay healthy. Yeah. He got the pick against Denver. One of those avatar cornerbacks, just like JPJ. Can't stay on the field. It, yeah, it is frustrating. It really is. He couldn't even make it through a play in this game against the Chargers. He got hurt on special teams. So I kept seeing people saying Corey Trice got hurt. And I'm thinking, I didn't even remember seeing Corey Trice out there. When did he get hurt? But it was on the opening kickoff. Tommy Vincent says Austin was injured. He he was, but then, oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. He was injured for, I think, his whole rookie season because they were talking about him coming back. He was practicing, but then he ended up getting surgery before he can even get Officially back in the lineup. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tommy Vincent just says, Deke, what's good, brother? What's good, man? How's it, go how's it going? See the fan 532 says, defense is for real. That's helping the offense. Not putting up points. Uh, What? Defense is for real. I guess you're saying that's helping when the offense isn't putting up a lot of points. Yeah, because we had... 18 points in the first game, 13 points in the second game. But week three against the Chargers, 20 points. Technically should have been 27 if Najee didn't stop before reaching the end zone. I'll take 27 points. I think a lot of us will take 27 points. 